E. coli is a, a very, very common bug in the environment and it lives in faeces. So it's absolutely imperative that we try to limit the contamination of the calf through its feeding and through its navel to the environment. And E. coli tends to occur from a day onwards, predominantly within the first uh, week of life. It can present with a calf that's collapsed and almost panting as if it had pneumonia. But actually the calf is showing you signs of aseptosemia or toxicity. E. coli causes a production of a very, very powerful toxin that causes the calf's organs to fail and inevitably the calf will not survive such a challenge of infection. It's absolutely important that we remove the calf from the potential contamination as soon as possible after birth and then put it into its individual or group calving pen. Salmonella is also another bacteria that calves can succumb to. Salmonella will affect calves of any age and it predominantly affects calves that have been sourced from elsewhere, i.e. from market or other, other units. Salmonella can also be brought onto the farm through wildlife. So it's absolutely important that wildlife is not able to gain access to the calf accommodation. Also, it can gain access to the farm through um, people visiting. So again, we must make provision of good biosecurity to prevent salmonella. As far as E. coli goes, we know that E. coli attaches to the immunity or the, uh, the colostrum and this affects the ability of the colostrum to be absorbed through the, the wall of the stomach where it then goes into the bloodstream where it has its major effect. We also know that E. coli affects the acidity of the abomasum and this actually reduces the ability of the antibody to actually be absorbed as well. It's almost the body's uh, protective effect saying I'm being challenged therefore I'm going to shut all my doors to prevent these nasty bugs going into my system and this is actually counterproductive going forward in the calf's life.